Well, hello, everybody. It's uh, Kathy Nelson. I am the CEO and founder of The Photo Managers. If you didn't uh, know me and expected somebody from B&H, but we have been uh, enjoying being guest speakers uh, for the past year where we bring a series of uh, conversations and topics with you all. And so today we are here to talk about setting yourself up for photo organizing success in 2024, because who can relate to being completely overwhelmed with all the photos, whether they're here on all our little trusty devices, our little point and shoot camera, or the lifetime of photos that you have uh, accumulated over the years. So we have two amazing experts, two certified photo professional photo managers, Holly Corbett and Laura Barker. And uh, they're going to take it and uh, share with you. Holly has been a longtime member in Minnesota, and Laura is a professional photographer who has changed her profession to uh, making photo books and organizing people's photos in California. So Holly, I'll let you take it from here. All right. Thanks, Kathy. I'm so excited to be here today. Um, again, my name is Holly Corbett. Um, I am the founder and owner of Capture Photos. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. Perfect. All right. Let's dive in. All right. Yes, I'm Holly Corbett. I am the founder and owner of Capture Photos, where we help people to celebrate life, tell stories, and touch hearts with your lifetime of memories. Um, again, we're located in the Minneapolis area, but we serve clients all over the country, um, and we specialize in digital photo organizing. Nothing I love better than a big, messy digital collection. Um, I've been in the photo business since 2010. Uh, we work one-on-one -on -one with clients, as well as we have a series series of online courses called the Photo Organizing Blueprint. So today, we are going to dive in and talk about setting you up for success in 2024. Um, there's a couple of things I want to chat, with, chat about. The first is how to get started. So getting photos organized pops up on a lot of New Year's resolution lists. But one of the biggest things that people start with is getting started. So today, we're going to start there. Then we're going to dive into a few digital things. So I want to give you three things that if you do them, will make your life 100% easier when it comes to your photos. And then the third thing we're going to talk about is um, letting go of that feeling of your photos being that stressor. And what are some things that we can do to um, create a healthy photo mindset and make your photos um, bring the bring the joy that they really are intended to bring you. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, so getting started, there are three steps to getting started. It's a process of three steps. The first is to know your why. Identify what is motivating you. The second thing is to take inventory. And the third thing is to create a plan. Let's walk through each of those steps. So step one is to know your why. No one has to have organized photos, but when you do, it can be so fun and amazing. Um, but because there's getting there is sometimes a challenge, it is a super easy project to give up on. When you understand what's motivating you to even add this to your New Year's resolutions, it can help you stay motivated to get it done. I encourage you just to take a minute here to imagine what it would feel like to be able to find any photo or any memory you want in just a minute. To be able to share something quickly or to be able to quickly pull together photos that you wanted to do or wanted to have this project, you've just been dying to do it, but just haven't gotten there yet. Just feel what that, take a minute and just see how that feels. All right, there we go, back in the pack. Um, so some of the whys that some of my clients have, um, maybe they have an event that's coming up, like a graduation or maybe a downsizing is what is motivating someone. Or maybe an event that just happened, like a family reunion where someone kind of dumped a couple boxes on you of all kinds of old family photos and memorabilia. Or another thing um, that sometimes is because maybe you've lost someone. So an event might be that maybe there's someone in your family has lost their life and you really want to mem remember them in a special way. And then this big one that I get all the time is they just can't stand the mess any longer. And it's time that they're finally motivated to get it done. So there's all kinds of things that could motivate you. If you know your why, you can come back to that when you're frustrated or simply tired or bored of the project. So I want you to try to kind of revisit that feeling um, that you imagined. All right. Step two, take inventory. 
In order to organize your memories, you need to know where they are. So one of the most powerful things you can do for your memory collection is to get everything into one place. This does a few things for you. First of all, it gets you started. It gives you a concrete action that can take you, um, that can that you can take where you'll be able to see your progress pretty quickly. The second thing is it gives you an opportunity to back up your collection. A digital collection, for example, that's all over the place is really difficult to keep safe. And the third thing is that it helps you prioritize and also tells you what needs the most attention and it helps you take the project in pieces. So I suggest that you look at your photos and memories in four areas, or there's four areas of your memory collection. The first is your printed photos. So your printed in photos would include things like loose photos you have hanging around, photos and albums or scrapbooks, the inherited old box of photos, um, and photos and frames. The second place or second category is your digital photos. So this would include photos on your phone, on your computer, on your external drives, on your memory cards, on your flash drives, on your tablets, on your cloud sites, all over the place, even your old phones and your old computers. So where all of those digital photos are living. The third is old media, often our home movies. This includes old home movies like videos on your VCR tapes or old camcorder tapes um, or maybe really old ones on film. I don't know if anyone has those lying around or even slides. And the fourth is memorabilia. So this might include boxes of old school papers and artwork of your kids, old family documents like marriage certificates, diplomas, or items from a family member's time in the service. Or sometimes you have treasures of your own, like maybe there's old greeting cards or concert tickets or medals or trophies. Usually when people are thinking about getting organized, they have one of these top of mind. You can absolutely just organize one area, but there's so much richness and joy to be discovered when you're looking at all of your memories in one place. So start with one, but think about ultimately having a hub where everything lives. I encourage my clients to complete what I call a photo inventory, which is essentially a list of where all of your memories are currently living. Here's a form that I use with my clients. You can get a copy of this and some of the material I'm covering today um, by going to the capturephotos.com slash free guide. It's a free guide that I offer and you can just go grab that form. I want you to start checking off where you're going to find your memory. So take something like this or make a list, however you want to do it. I want to caution you about one thing. If something is a pain to get at or get to, it's really easy to, to decide to not include that in your project or say, oh, I'll get that later. I highly discourage this. Later often doesn't happen. And when you're deduplicating a digital collection, for example, it's 100% easier to do, do that once when you have everything versus having to do it again and again when you get around to start locating those other picks. You'll just be so glad that you just went and did it and kind of bit the bullet and took that action. All right. Step three is to create a plan. Now, some people, when they heard the word, word plan, they're like, I'm out. I'm not going to do that. Now, I'm not suggesting that you need a five page plan for this project. But what I am suggesting is that if you have a strategy going in and a process, it's going to make this project so much easier. Your plan can be simple. It can be as simple as having one overall goal that is something like create one digital hub where the whole Johnson family memory collection lives. Then create some goals for each area of your collection. So for example, your digital photos might be to consolidate, deduplicate, and organize my digital photos and put them in one single system. For your printed photos, it might be sort my printed photos and scan all of my favorites. For your old media and home movies, it might be digitize our old videotaped home movies and slides. And memorabilia, it might be sort and identify the best way to preserve your memorabilia um, and figure out what's important to archive for our family. Once you've identified your goals, you're gonna go through each of your four areas and list the status and inventory of your collection, the plan for organizing it, or how you're gonna get it done, and the deadlines for completion. Deadlines are so, so important. 
So this is a general format that I use with my clients. Um, this template, if you love templates, um, this template along with some more detailed getting started information can be found in our photo organizing blueprint course. Um, but setting deadlines is probably the most important part of your plan because if you stick to them, it will help you stay focused. There's something psychological about setting a deadline and accomplishing it that keeps us going. Like most plans, things may change. And that's okay, as long as you stay focused on your goals and the reason you started this project in the first place. All right, so you've taken inventory of your collection and know basically where everything is. You've created a plan that identifies where you're going to start. Now it's time to dive in. Regardless of the part of your collection that you're starting with, the next step is going to be what we call hunting and gathering. Here's what that looks like for each area of your collection. Let's start with printed photos. You're going to take that inventory list and grab all of the boxes in the basement, under the beds, in the closets. I even want you to go to that drawer that you've thrown all those loose photos in. Maybe you have a box somewhere that has old school photos of your kids or whatever. I want you to grab them all. And I want you to physically move them into one room. Physically move them into one room, one space. I have a quick caution for you. For right now, you're just grabbing them. Don't take the time to start sorting them because it will take you down a rabbit hole. Your job is to simply get everything into one space. It's so easy when you're doing this to get lost in the memories. And I promise you'll have time later to do that. But right now you've got a job to do and that's simply gathering them up. Digital photos. Once again, I want you to grab that inventory list and go find all of the physical sources where your digital photos are living and pull them together. For example, your phone, your computer, the external drives, the flash drives, the memory cards, the photo CDs and DVDs, those are a big one and they're usually kind of all over the place. This is also a great time to find all of the usernames and passwords for any cloud sites that you have photos saved on. Um, with your digital photos, consolidation means copying everything from all of these sources to one place. And we recommend copying everything onto a new external drive. So basically, you're going to take that new drive, you're going to create a folder called original sources, and then under that original sources, you're going to create a folder for each of your sources. So for example, you're going to have a folder for all the photos coming from your computer a folder for your phone photos, a photo for a folder for all of the photos in Dropbox, et cetera, et cetera. My best tip for you with your digital photos is to be patient. This process can take a while and technology can get tricky and a little frustrating, but if you stick with it, you'll be so glad that you did. The best part of this is that once everything is in one place, you can back it up which I highly recommend, even if it's a mess. Back up the mess at this point. The same advice applies with digital photos as with printed photos. Don't start sorting and deleting yet. You'll get pulled into the rabbit hole if you do. Just copy everything over because it's so much easier to deal with it when it's all in one place. All right, old media and home movies. Once again, this includes your old videos on VCR tapes, old camcorder tapes, um, really old memories on film reels, as well as slides. I even put DVDs in this category because so many of us no longer use DVD players. Same advice here as with printed photos, move everything into one room, or in this case, sometimes it's just maybe one box. The thing with old media is that it has a shelf life and it's going to start getting crunchy and crispy. So don't put this off for too long. My best tip for old home movies is to transfer them to MP4 formatted files so they can be watched on any screen. So an MP4 file is a file that can be read by your computer, your phone, um, your tablet, your TV, and all that kind of thing. So that's really the format that we recommend digitizing everything to these days. All right, memorabilia. Um, once again, gathered up in one location so you know what the full scope of the project is. Um, I'm a big believer that if you're going to keep it, honor it. That might mean taking a picture of the kid's artwork where that macaroni is falling all over the place instead of keeping that physical piece. 
there are many ways you can honor memorabilia without the clutter. If you make it this far, you've done some of the hardest work of getting started and making progress toward organizing your photos. Having a process and a plan will make all the difference. All right, so let's dive into talking about some digital photos for a minute. Digital photos are a challenge for a lot of people, from managing the technology to deciphering all of the choices to the overwhelm of just having too many photos. In my almost 14 years doing this work, I found that there are three things that if you do nothing else, will change the way that you look at your digital photos. The first is create a digital hub. Consolidate your digital photos into one location. So basically doing what we just covered. It's amazing how many people have basically lost control over their digital photos. Sometimes it's because maybe they've changed computers or systems, or they discovered a new software or app and they're like, oh, I'm gonna try this with these photos. Or a big one is that they tried to keep their photos safe by backing them up, but got confused by all of the different places they stored the backups. Consolidating your photos into one location will not only give you the peace of mind, but it allows you to do number two, which is back up your collection. It is impossible to effectively back up your photos when they're all over the place. I would say that along with that feeling of overwhelm, this is probably my client's biggest stressor about their photos is backup. Number three, set up a system where your smartphone photos automatically download to your computer. So many people don't back up their phone or a lot of people also are just blindly paying Apple or Google, whatever it takes out of fear of losing their memories. Setting this process up solves that issue. So I want to take a few minutes and give you, we're going to get to the nitty gritty a little bit here because I want to give you some really practical advice on how to handle some of these things. So I want to talk for a minute to my PC users and then I'm going to talk for a minute to my Mac users. So I'm going to start with the PC users. My favorite apps for the purpose of setting up that system where your phone photos are automatically downloading to your computer um, are OneDrive and Dropbox. And this is easy to set up, guys. It's not hard. So this is what you do. So we're on your phone right now, and this applies for both Androids and iPhones. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to download and install the app on the phone, regardless if you're an iPhone or Android user. It's the same. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is to create an account or sign in to an existing account. So many of my PC clients are already paying for Microsoft 365 and don't even realize that Microsoft 365 comes with one terabyte of space on OneDrive. So they're already paying for it. So if you are doing that already, you've already got a vehicle for um, storing and, and keeping these photos. Um, same with Dropbox. A lot of people are paying for Dropbox subscriptions. You can use that for this purpose. All right. Number three is to go to the app settings and turn on camera uploads. So here are the settings for these two apps. Um, these are screenshots from an iPhone, but it's very, very similar on the Android. And then you just got to be patient. That first download of all of your photos can take a while, can take a few hours at least. So just be be patient and let the magic happen, I always say. All right. So once you're downloaded, you will be able to see all of the phone photos in the camera roll folder in the app on your phone. So they'll still be on your smart cam smartphone um, camera place that are photos that you go to. Um, but you'll also see them in this app. OK. Now we're going to go to your PC. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to download the Dropbox or OneDrive desktop app on your computer. So go to dropbox.com or onedrive.com and you'll be able to, drive, to um, download those apps. Then on your computer, you're gonna go to File Explorer, go to the little yellow folder, and then you're gonna create and or sign into your account. So the icon where you sign in can be a little bit tricky to find. So you'll see I have it here. So the OneDrive, I'm at the bottom right-hand side of your screen. The OneDrive little cloud is gonna get you to OneDrive. The little box for Dropbox is gonna get you to, to Dropbox. Once you sign in, 
um, the Dropbox, either Dropbox or OneDrive, should be showing up on the folder list in the left on File Explorer. So under the app, you're going to find for OneDrive, you're going to find a pictures folder with a camera roll folder. And in Dropbox, you're just going to see Dropbox, and then it'll say camera uploads. Once you're logged in, both the mobile app and the app on your computer, your phone photos are going to automatically start downloading and syncing up. So again, you have to be patient, um, but everything will just start syncing up. And it is a beautiful thing. Um, then going forward, you you don't have to do you don't have to plug the phone in or just hope that your phone doesn't fall in a lake. They're just there for you. I do have a couple of things you should know. First of all, photos don't sync once they're downloaded. And so the systems don't talk always. And so like if your smartphone camera roll, if you delete something from there, it's not going to delete from the app on your phone. So it's not going to delete from the OneDrive app. So those two don't talk after they've been downloaded. The second thing is you may need to buy some cloud storage space. But again, if you're a Microsoft 365 user already, you've got the space. Um, there is some free space on both of them, but the it may or may not be enough, depending on how diligent you are about moving things around. All right. Um, the next thing is to get to get the photos to download full-size versions on your PC hard drive, you have to do some right-clicking on the pictures camera roll folder um, and select always keep on this device for OneDrive or make available offline. So there's a little bit of settings that you have to take care of there. And then lastly, if you find that your photos aren't uploading at some point in the future, try opening up the app on your phone. That will usually take care of it. It just means it just needs a little, a little charge. Um, or sometimes you need to update the app if you haven't done that in a while. Okay, easy peasy, right? Okay, let's jump over to our Mac people. Apple has set up a pretty amazing ecosystem that allows you to use iCloud to transfer your phone photos into your photos library on your computer without you having to raise a finger, which is my favorite way to maintain my photo collection. The key to Apple, though, is the setup. Note by doing this that all of the photos on your computer and your phone will sync, meaning that all of your photos in your Apple Photos app and your computer will be viewable on your phone and your computer. So everything is syncing once you turn this on, um, which is pretty awesome from the perspective of um, you can be sitting at the in the carpool lane and be deleting photos and it syncs everywhere, which I love. So here are the settings that you're gonna need on your phone. So on your phone, you're gonna to go to your settings and then you're gonna to go to name and then you're gonna to go to iCloud. And this is the screen you're gonna to get to. And in order for your photos to transfer to iCloud from your phone, you'll need to turn on sync this iPhone. So it has to be green like this. Okay, so it's as simple as that. On your Mac, you're gonna to go to, you're gonna open up the Photos app on your Mac. And then on the top, you're gonna to go to Photos next to the Apple. Um, and you're gonna to go to Settings and you go to iCloud. And you're gonna select iCloud Photos. So what you see here, um, and if you have enough space on your computer hard drive, we recommend that you select Download Originals to this Mac. So the reason we like that is because we want you to own a copy of your photos. Um, if you don't do that, um, your originals will be living in iCloud. So if you have enough space, I like you to use that download originals to this Mac. What does this give you? It gives you an easy way to get your photos off your phone, onto your computer, and your entire library at your fingertips at all times, which is a beautiful thing. Here are a few things you should know about the whole Apple setup world. You may need to increase your iCloud storage. It's worth it though. It's so worth it. If you delete from one location, it will delete from all locations. So this is different than with the PC world. Um, so you just have to know that it's it's going to delete. So don't assume that because you have it saved in iCloud that um, you can just delete it from your phone and it'll be it will say be saved in iCloud. That's not how it works. Because iCloud acts as a syncing service, it's important that you back up an original copy of your photos somewhere besides iCloud. So that kind of goes back to, you know, downloading originals. If you don't have room on your computer, your hard drive computer, take an external 
drive and um, back up that library, an original copy of that library onto that external drive. Apple is, I mean, is going nowhere. And I think that, you know, iCloud is one of the most secure cloud sites for sure out there for photos. However, I just think that if you decide you want to break up someday with iCloud and you don't own your photos, then you have to do it then. So it's just a good idea to own your photos and not trust a cloud site 100% in any sense, um, especially when it comes to your precious memories. All right. Photos can be powerful and they can be amazing, but they can also cause stress. And if you're overwhelmed with the number of photos you have, you're worried about losing your photos to technology fails, or you're paralyzed because you don't know where to start, they can be stressful. I am a big believer in creating a healthy mindset around your photos. To do that in the new year, here are a few things to think about. The first is be mindful and intentional of the photos you take. Focus on quality over quantity. Now, I know that this audience, there's probably a ton of photographers. And I'm not talking about when you are off shooting, doing a photo shoot, and you're taking a load of pictures because it's your job and you have to get that perfect shot. I'm more thinking about kind of in your day-to-day -day world where we're taking screenshots and we're taking, you know, pictures of all the things like taking a picture that we can just show to show someone, but it's not some really part of our family um, memories that we need to keep forever. What we have to do is we just have to get better at thinking about the things that we really want to take pictures of and really want to keep those pictures. And so my advice is to take less. You don't really need 200 photos of that, that child's birthday party, sixth birthday party. You need a few for sure, because that those few are going to jog that memory, but you don't need 200 of them. So we got to, we got to think about that. Um, in, in this digital world, it's probably one of our biggest challenges because it's so easy to just click that button. The second thing is fall in love with your delete key. Curate your collection so it includes fewer photos. Schedule 15 minutes on your calendar once a week to delete the ones that are repetitive, the less meaningful ones, the screenshots that you captured to remember what type of shampoo that you need to buy, um, or simply just the bad photos. Fall in love with your delete key. The third thing, do a project with your photos that inspires you. It can be as simple as taking a single photo, printing it, buying a frame, and put it somewhere that you see every day that's going to make you smile. This will motivate you. I can't tell you the number of times that I've done a project and it just makes me want to do more. It makes me want to be in my photos more. It makes me want to play with my photos more and enjoy them because that's what they're meant to be. They're meant to be, be used and enjoyed. Photos bring the most joy when they're visible and shared. This is one thing that is going to keep you going on this project. And the last thing, ask for help. Every single client I've worked with tells me that they're overwhelmed with their photos. Every single one. Sometimes the best way to overcome that feeling is to ask for help. And this could be in so many different forms. It could be in the form of a class. It could be online resources. It could be asking a friend that knows a lot about you know, photos and systems. Or it could be hiring someone to help you. Any of those things is great, but if you're stuck, ask for help. Thank you for letting me be here today and share this information with you. Um, you can find me and um, more tips and information at capturephotos.com. Um, and as well as the photo managers, this is where you get to the photo managers. And I think you probably see some other links elsewhere, but the photo managers is an amazing organization and you can find local resources. If you need that help, go there and you can find so many resources. And also I'd love to connect with you on Facebook, Instagram, or Pinterest. So thank you for um, letting me be here today. And Laura, I am going to turn it over to you. Great. Thank you, Holly. Yeah. Great sure. presentation. That was uh, so many great tips that hopefully people can utilize because we know how, how overwhelmed everybody is. Mm -hmm. So let me share my screen and let's see here. All right. Well, he hello, everybody. Um, 
in keeping with today's theme of keeping your photos safe in the new year, I'm going to talk about photo books, which are a great way to preserve your favorite images. So I'm going to share my journey going from professional photographer to professional photo manager specializing in photo books. So this presentation is more about the journey of, of uh, where I started and where I ended up and why I like doing it. So if you're a professional photographer and you're interested in adding this as maybe one of your services, I would I would consider it and you can kind of see, see what, what I've gone through. Second here. Okay, so a little bit about me. Um, my name is Laura Barker and I love photos. I'm a lifelong photographer and the founder and CEO of photocurating.com. We're a photo management firm located in the San Francisco Bay Area, and we specialize in creating high-end custom photo books. We also help those overwhelmed with what to do with all their photos, just like Holly was talking about. And we enjoy being able to turn a client's massive images into an organized and curated collection in beautiful photo books and other sharing platforms. So my photo journey began in Florence, Italy during a semester abroad decades ago. Um, a classmate let me look through the lens of her big SLR camera and I was hooked. The creative freedom to adjust the focal length, the depth of field um, to capture how I saw things was thrilling. And so that began my lifelong passion for photography and I haven't stopped. So my professional photography career started in corporate and event photography. Then after having children, I switched my focus to family portrait photography so I could learn how to better capture my young children as I saw them. And thank goodness, young kids are fairly willing subjects to learn on because their teenage selves would groan whenever I brought out my camera. In addition to my professional photography, personally, I've captured organized and shared decades of memories in photo books and online galleries for my friends and family. So my daughters grew up enjoying seeing many of our adventures captured in photo books, and they've always appreciated being able to pull up any childhood photo from their phone on demand. So this photo was taken this past Christmas and captures an emotional moment when my daughter gave a beautiful photo book to her grandparents that she had made. She learned from mom. Uh, the book captured the journey of a very special family trip and brought a tear to her grandfather's eye. I just love how photo books can capture the feelings and memories of a particular time and can help us relive these past moments, which are, is really captured in the snapshot that she also took. So while working as a portrait photographer, the pandemic hit. Photographing, photographing clients was not possible due to the stay at home mandate. So I looked for other income opportunities. Serendipitously, I discovered the photo managers. I couldn't believe I'd found a new business niche where people were making a living doing work that I didn't think people would pay me to do helping others with their photo projects and photo mess. I was thrilled. This opportunity brought together some of my favorite skills and interest, photography, organization, visual design, and technology. I dove in. I did the intensive training and became a certified professional photo manager. When I started helping clients tackle their photo projects, I quickly learned that most people didn't know how to go about making a photo book with their, all their digital images, or they're really uncomfortable doing it. And many of them just wanted someone to take care of it for them, which was great because that's what I wanted to do. I was so happy to be able to help them. My first client had 1200 images from just one private celebration and wanted them curated in an upscale coffee table photo book. I remember feeling shocked when the client didn't need to approve the 300 out of 1,200 photos that I had curated and culled for the book. She was just so relieved to get the project taken care of um, that, sh that she didn't even need to see them. So this was a far cry from some of my portrait uh, photography clients that can be super picky. I was just such a delight to just find clients that are just so happy to have our services. 
The majority of books I create for my clients are special events, travel, family yearbooks, and biographical tributes. These books often involve using undigitized photos that need to be scanned. So with all my photography background and all the equipment I already had, it was an easy transition to add DSLR camera scanning to my services so I could digitize my clients' images. I'm now a pro at archival scanning of moments or lifetimes of photo history and culling and organizing it to be enjoyed in photo books and digital family photo hubs. My basic process to create a book is to work with a client to identify a theme and start to identify all the images that will help tell that story. So we start with a book outline with the intended contents for each part of the book. These include the titles, number of pages, sections, images um, that they wanna use and other items that we might include. And then this becomes the working roadmap as we put the book or set of books together. It's really been very helpful for to keep us both on the same page if the client is heavily involved in the project. After creating the general outline of the book, we're able to brainstorm on any other images or text that we could add to better tell the story. Once we've identified all the content, then I scan any photos that are digital and capture images of any memorabilia so stuff that they may be a medal or something else, or maybe a business card or other things they want to include in the book. Um, I scan those so we can include images of that. And then I gather um, any written text. Then I organize the content by sorting the images into the different sections. And then I'm ready to lay out the book, which is a part I really like. And with, uh, with the software these days, um, it's pretty easy to do. Um, it's quick to do in a way that I wasn't before when I was making photo books years and years ago. Um, I usually des design the cover last uh, to give me a chance to figure out the best compelling uh, visual to indicate what's in the book. So sometimes it's an entire image that kind of says it. Sometimes it's a, a group of images like on this series of books in the slide. So what started as an extra income source soon became my full-time focus. So I transitioned to full-time photo manager with photography on the side, as I've heard many photo photographers have done. I enjoy the aspects and challenges of photo-related projects more than I did taking clients' photos. There's a real need for these services I provide and my clients are very grateful. This is in contrast to some of my portrait photography clients who are so picky about how they look that no matter what lengths I go to to capture them in the right light, they're not happy unless I end up photoshopping them just how they wanna be seen. So that's not very rewarding for me. Um, so with AI these days, they'll just probably use generative to AI to have their portraits, so. So this shift to photo manager was not only more rewarding and enjoyable, but also more lucrative. Yay. Most of the photo manager projects span many months as opposed to a single photo shoot uh, that I had in my photography business. And, th and this business is also less seasonal than portrait photography. So I've got year round work and even a, a photo book project can actually span many months, depending on the content, if we're scanning, how we're coming up with um, everything in it. So it's uh, nice to have a bunch of different projects going at once that can go, kind of go all year long. Um, so I also just really enjoy the uh, relationships that I build with my clients when I help them with their photo needs, which makes this um, a profession I, I really like. So I've been asked what skills from my photography background helped me to transition to photo manager. So these are, you know, Adobe Lightroom from the organizing and editing photos that we use to sort uh, our clients' photos um, and append all the data, metadata to it. Uh, the ability to quickly cull and curate large batches of photos. So um, I've got an eye that I can, you know, I can take a, a client's just like that photo book of 1,200 images, I can go pretty quickly to find the top images to use, where my, my clients, it would take hours for them to do that. I also have a technical understanding of the equipment and software, tons of tons of uh, software in this business. 
Uh, and uh, I've got the photographer's eye to create compelling and balanced uh, book layouts. So sometimes clients just don't know how to arrange pictures on a page for photo books or um, their websites for their photos. So I, it's easy to be able to help with that too. So if you're a professional photographer, I encourage you to look into adding photo books and photo management to your list of services. Uh, you can learn more um, and consider joining the photo managers where um, it's it's a fabulous group of people. Here's a photo of uh, four of us that got together for a recent conference. But um, this group um, generously collaborate, share best practices, and they're all an invaluable resource for staying on top of the constantly changing technology in this industry. It's great to have each other to help because there's a million little details that we go through every day, especially when technology doesn't work or there are updates. And to have this whole community, it's a worldwide community that we can lean on to figure out tips and tricks to help our clients um, with all of their photo projects. So I highly, I highly recommend it. And no matter what your profession, my wish for you is to take some special memories off your device like Holly said, you get them off your device so you can hold them in your hands and view them and enjoy them and put some of them in a photo book where they can be remembered and treasured. If you want to get started making your own photo book, there's a, a great consumer photo book company called Mixbook and their simple interface and AI software make it super easy to auto create a beautiful book that you can further customize if, if desired. So some of my clients just say, how can I just try to make one? So I say, give that a shot. If you need help, I can coach you through it. If you want me to make you a professional book, I'm happy to do that too. So if you want help with creating photo books or having a professional photo book made for you, so I recommend finding a photo manager in your area who can coach you through it or do it for you or reach out to me and I would be happy to help. So. My contact information is up there. My website is photocurating.com. And thank you for your time today. Wonderful. That was great. Both uh, Holly and Laura, thank you so much for uh, your great uh, your great presentations. I had a couple questions that have come in that I want to ask quickly. Uh, Holly, this I think is for you from Robin. She says, I have a problem with finding the same photos in multiple locations. So how do I know which one is best to keep and which to delete? I refrain from deleting photos since I freak out about the possibility of deleting the wrong ones. I'm overwhelmed. Help. Yeah, it's a, it's a super common problem. So the best advice I have for you is get everything into one place first. So get that original sources, all everything into one place, because it's really hard to say, oh, I've got one over here and one over here or whatever. Once you get them into one place, you can apply um, some deduplicating software. And that is an amazing tool if you have a lot of duplicates. So if you are a Mac user, I like Photo Sweeper. If you're a PC user, I like Duplicate Cleaner. Um, and what that will do is it allows you to look at the two photos. So you the photo, the software will find the duplicates for you, and then it will put them side by side. And it would also line up for you like, okay, maybe this one is a much smaller file size than this one. And you're going to want to keep the bigger one because it'll blow up better or, um, you know, that kind of thing. There's so many reasons that, you know, photos are different and that kind of thing. But I highly recommend deduplicating software. But your first step has got to be to kind of get them all into one place. So I got a question for you. What's the most number of photos that you've deduped in a photo collection for a client? Do you know? Um, or what's that, a that I've taken out or that I started with? Uh, when you started and then when you ran the do, so what they, what's the most number of digital photos you started with? And after you did the deduplication, I'm saying this so that, is it Robin? Uh, yeah. Robin, so you know that you're not alone. Hold what on, was no. the what was the number of photos that you ended you know, up? I want, I want to say that probably one of the largest collections, and this is the top of mind because it was fairly recently, was about 900,000 photos. So almost a million photos. Um, and I bet we got, we got rid of two thirds of them. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I know my collection went from like 90,000 down to like 35,000 or something. So yeah. Again, and yeah, you know, you're not a, that's a very common problem, uh, Rose. And that's what Pete, Robin, and that's what people worry about. Yeah. Uh, this is a question uh, I had that we got a couple of questions that came in for Karen. That was, that was great. Thank you. So, I mean, Laura, I'm sorry. Uh, that was uh, Sherry asked, do you charge by hour to create a photo book? How do you, how do you charge? Yes, I charge by hour, an hour. So you, 
I can give a I can give a quote based on you know how many images you have and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, but but in the end, it's it's hourly. And I know you're really busy because you were looking for some help recently for <laughs> <laughs> you need some assistance. And then LB uh, Laura asked as well, uh, or LB said to Laura, what software do you use when you design photo books? Um, there's a bunch of different software uh, in design, and then I use a program uh, called uh, Xeno Design. Questions. I was going to ask, what's one of the most uh, fun photo book projects that you've done? Um, I, I there was one. I had a slide of it where I I did a you know a family's their entire life history, and we consolidated you know, gosh, I don't know, fifty thousand photos, took the best ones, and then consolidated it down to I think seven photo books. Um, and it was just, uh, it was just really, it was a really special project that, that took a lot of time and effort and the client was just so thrilled with it. It was, um, I, I enjoyed it a lot. It was more than just, um, you know, a family vacation. It was history and, um, uh, family. Do you, text, do you uh, add text and things to your? Yeah, life? lots, of, lots of text. Um, so that, that's, that's something I like. I've also, and I've done, um, quite a few biographies too, or it's somebody's life you know, images and, you know, a lot of the memorabilia about them. Um, those just, they're, I don't know, they kind of stand out above some of the rest of the regular family yearbooks and um, travel books and event books. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, for me, I always say the reason we take photos is to tell the stories of our lives. So adding the stories with the photos is a really profound experience because you're going to forget, right? And you see those right. things. So that, that end product, um, you know, once you get those photos in a system, like I just said to Holly, because she helped me with my digital photos, my, uh, my, my, my really sweetheart rescue dog passed away suddenly. And, um, I'm actually going to make a, I'm making a photo book actually of the, and end up is growing into the pets I've loved, but I was able to quickly find all the photos of all the pets I've had in my life because, uh, we, my photo have all the, they've been deduplicated and it was quickly for me to then do that search. And it was so much fun. So, um, let's see, somebody just asked, um, no, uh, Robin said, thank you for the detailed answer. I will try photo sweeper right away. I have literally have 30,000 photos since I've been a photographer for 25 years. So this helps. I will check out your courses as well. And then we have another question. What about deciding how to organize your information by date, by event, by topics, fireworks, portraits, pets, wildlife, or some other way? Does it vary depending on the client? I think yeah, it does very dependent dependent on the client. I am a big believer in, I don't try to change how my client thinks. Um, so in, this is my own theory. I feel like there, there are people that like really are big into chronological sorting. So they want their photos by year. Um, and I'm not going to try to change that. However, there are other people that are really adamant about it. they can't remember what they happened, what happened yesterday, let alone what year things happened. So they're more kind of those subject based thinkers. And so I'm kind of a, a hybrid of the two. So when I'm working with clients, oftentimes I am kind of meshing the two a little bit because I think there's value to both. Um, but if you are like some people, if you're chronological, sort chronologically, wherever you think that you're going to go look for that photo first that's where you should put it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And you as well, Laura, in terms of when you're making photo books or say if it's like a family history, do you try and stay in a chronological order or have you worked? Yeah, I, I pretty much organize everything chronologically just to get the dates correct and get it in the right order. But it doesn't mean that's how the the client is going to consume it or put it in a book. So, you know, by uh, tagging stuff with metadata, then I can categorize it kind of any way I want. So, if um, like the client that uh, she ended up doing what was seven or eight books and it was not chronological, they're all, you know, theme based. So I tagged things for vacation or I tagged things um, from the old family history, birthdays. I think they had a book of celebration. So by adding the the, ta the metadata tags, you can end up categorizing how, however you want, which is really helpful. Uh, everybody there, you know, in the chat, you can see, uh, links to their websites, uh, both, uh, Laura and Holly's websites also to the photo managers. We'd love to, uh, welcome you to, if you're thinking about, um, becoming a photo manager yourself to join, or we have a new program called photo manager and training, which you can actually join and, uh, just spend a year getting your own photos organized. We have a whole month by month program where we walk you through the process. So we'd be happy to share that with you. And thank you so much for BNH photo for letting us, uh, be here. So thank you so much, Laura and Holly. And uh, right. thank you, Derek and everybody behind the scenes at BH Photo.